A generalization of the nearest neighbor classifier is the k-nearest neighbors classifier, where k is the number of neighbors that will play a role in the classification. We'll decide the class based on the majority. Follow along with your code from last time or get my version from GitHub. OK. Get it? Because of the K nearest name. No, 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 no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. Let's try drawing something here. Oh, come on, I tried my best. Let's see what's around it. There is this one tree here that is closest. A very tall, pointy tree from Montana 57. But apart from that, all these neighbors are pencils. Maybe this will work better if we use more neighbors here and consider the majority. Let's see. In viewer HTML, we need to update our nearest neighbor search here to return more items. Let's go to utils, to the get nearest function, and add here a third parameter, k. We set it to 1 by default, so by default we'll return just the nearest neighbor, but otherwise k nearest neighbors. And let's remove this code. We'll write a more general one instead. I want to return the indices here. So let's take out objects from our data points so that we take their value and their index and return a new object like this. So OBJ now contains the same thing as points, but as an object where the point is the value and the other attribute is the index. Next, we can sort these with the following callback function. We return the distance between our given location and the value of A minus the distance between our location and the value of B. This will sort them so that the nearest ones are first. And then we can take out just the indices using the map function like this and return the first k indices. Now let's save this and in viewer HTML here we actually get indices now. So there are many of them. And here, the first one is the nearest one. Let's see if the code still works now. It should be exactly as before. Refresh. Let's draw something. If we zoom in. Yeah, seems to work. It finds the nearest. Let's change it a little bit, increase its width. Yeah, all good. But now let's find more neighbors. Let's say maybe 10. And handle this new logic with multiple values. Let's figure out the nearest samples next. They are going to be coming from the indices. If we map them so that each index becomes the sample at that index, and we can get the labels of these samples by typing labels is nearest samples, where we take out the label. Now we want to count how many of these are, how many are trees, how many are cars, and, and so on. So I'm going to prepare 
an object for accounts and for each label of labels I'm going to update this counts I will say counts of label is equal to if counts of label is defined then I'm going to increase it by one otherwise I'm going to set it to one it's the first time we found that item then we want to figure out the majority so let's see what is the maximum value of these counts I'm going to set max equal to the maximum of the values of counts I'm getting the values not the keys here and this is an array so we can spread it and pass it to our math max function and finally we can get the label the label will be searched from the labels as the label where counts of that label L is max now we need to fix our code in several places like here we can just keep this label as such and let's return all nearest samples here so let's put an s here and also need to make sure up here where we classify that we get nearest samples as well we will also be passing nearest samples to show dynamic point we will draw lines to all of them you'll see we do that inside of the chart first we need to update this nearest sample in the constructor to nearest samples and here nearest samples nearest samples nearest samples we will use these in our draw method down here instead of drawing this one line we are going to loop through all the samples of this nearest samples and let's extract the point from here so this is going to be this part from here where we convert this point from the data space to the pixel space just need to make sure that we're passing here sample point and now we can reuse this point down here point like so all of these go inside of this for loop we close the for loop and save the file refresh the page let's draw something and zoom in a bit and look at all these lines right here and even though the nearest one is probably the tree or the fish in this case it selects the clock because we have one two three clocks which are more than everything else let's change it a bit <laughs> wow this is really nice It looks like it's walking there, kind of like a spider. Now I'm having fun watching this instead of teaching you things. Let's see how it looks like on my pencil from earlier. Boo! and it's a pencil let's see why i'm gonna go up here where it is in the data space and it's a pencil because of all these other pencils around it but is this really better or does it only work in this particular case we'll see did you follow along great please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well and if you got stuck somewhere ask and we'll figure it out. You can also take my version from GitHub and compare. Try to calculate the probability for the classification to be correct based on the number of neighbors of the predicted class. Most libraries have support for this feature and it's a useful thing to have. 
Other variants of the nearest neighbor classifiers exist as well, like a version weighted by distance or one that considers a fixed size neighborhood. Think you can implement any of these? Share your code with me and I'll showcase my favorite implementations in a future video. Next time, I'll teach you how to evaluate a classifier by measuring its accuracy.